Hi everyone, so today I want to show you something that I saw Gemma Clark do and also Sam from Mixed Up Crafts. They both did their own little versions of it and I've got my little spin on it as well. So I've done some of theirs and then one of my own as well. So we've got this little egg and inside this, as you can hear it, is a Lint Lindor egg, sort of similar to a, a Cadbury cream egg. That kind of thing. So anything that kind of size. I know Reese's do them. There's all different ones, isn't there, these days, of this kind of egg. But it fits into this little box. So this is one that I saw um, Sam from Mixed Up Crafts do. I think Gemma Clark did this one as well. Or she might have done the slightly bigger one. I'm not, I can't remember who did what. But anyway, this is one of the ones I've done. So it's quite nice. Nice little size. Just to give you a bit of a, you know, sort of scale of, of how big that one is. Then um, I did this one. I haven't fixed it all up at the top yet because I haven't still haven't filled it with anything. And this one I've actually decided to put a little string on so we can hang it. Um, so this is slightly bigger. Um, and this, I haven't really found anything. I expect this would probably fit a kinder. You could probably fit a kinder egg in there. But I was thinking of like maybe filling it with mini eggs or the little um, Cadbury eggs that you can get. The little mini eggs you can get from Cadbury's. Not the actual mini egg mini eggs, but, you know, the little tiny like Dane Bar ones and Cadbury Caramel ones, the little tiny ones. Um, so I was thinking about maybe putting those in there. And then this is a bigger one. So this is this is my version. So I've just sized it up again. Now, I was hoping that it would be big enough that I could fit one of these in it. However, these are a little bit too big, unfortunately, and they're not quite as elongated at the top. I reckon if you made this a little bit wider, you might be able to get away with it. Um, or even if you put, yeah, you might get away with it if you if you made it more like that bit was in the middle and then to square at the top, that might work. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't fit. So <laughs> that's the bottom line. But I'm probably going to fill this with, I've got some uh, marzipan eggs from um, either Lidl or Audi. And I don't know where they were from. They were either Lidl or Audi. Um, but yeah, so these, you could fit a few of these in there and you could also fit a few of these in there as well. So that might be an option if I haven't eaten them all. But yeah, so they're the three different sizes. So in today's video, I'm going to show you all three sizes. So obviously if you just want to see one of the sizes, just skip through the video to the size you want to see. Um, but yeah, so that's the video for today. The papers I've used are the Oh So Sweet pad from Trimcraft. This is what it looks like. It's the first edition one. And I've used a mix of like this sort of floral one and then I mixed it up with some of the flower this was like a pearlized one here um yeah just sort of found and then the other side of that stripe which is that one which is the one with the little donuts on it but I thought it was really cute so I think this is still available on Amazon if it is I'll put the link in the description below so make sure you check that out um and I think it's quite a recent pad this I mean recent more recent than some of the other ones I've used so yeah hopefully it'll still be available but um but yeah so that's the um the uh paper i've used and then the card i've just used a really thin card actually uh you could definitely go thicker than what i've used this one was about a 180 gsm maybe so really quite thin i wouldn't normally use card that thin but because of the triangles especially on the little one i really didn't want to be battling too much so that's why i went for something that i knew i was going to be able to fold easily i would say you probably don't want to go past a you probably don't want to go past about a 210 GSM, I would say. Anything between a 180 to 210, I reckon, is probably going to be about right. The bigger you get, the easier it gets. So the, this one was easier to fold, whereas that one was really quite fiddly, especially like with your little ones here. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, have a play yourself. Maybe try a little sample. But, yeah, so they're the three eggs. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to start with the small one. And so for this, you need a base card that's four and a half by six and a quarter. Now, I've gone ahead and scored my card already, as you can see, uh, just because I wanted to make it a little bit easier for myself. So what I've done is I've scored along this long edge, so along the six and a quarter edge, I've scored at three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter, three inches, three and three quarters, four and a half, five and a quarter, and six. So I'll put all those measurements up on the screen because I know that I probably went through that a bit too quick. And then if we turn it around this way, then I scored from left to right. 
I scored pretty much the same again kind of thing. So three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter, and three and three quarters. So basically every single square is three quarters by three quarters. And this is basically kind of like twice that really. Okay, so that's what we've done there. So what we're going to do, I've got my tab on the right and then all the squares and the rectangles here. So this one at the top here, we're going to get rid of that and the one next to it. We're going to miss one, get rid of this one, miss one, get rid of this one, miss one, get rid of this one. And we're going to do the same at the bottom. So wherever your cross is at the top, that's the same at the bottom. So starting from this side again, this one and the tab, miss one, this one, miss one, this one, miss one, and this one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and cut out all of those boxes that have got a cross in them. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut all the pieces out. So that's what you're left with. Okay, so this is obviously where the um, tab is. So now we're going to go ahead and do some diagonal scoring. So what you want to do is where all your little cut out pieces are, the squares below them are where we're going to make our halfway line. So halfway along those, um, along those um, squares. So what you can do is if you lay your ruler down, you're going to mark at one and one eighth that's halfway in that square, two and five eighths, which is halfway on that square, four and one eighth, five and five eighths. Okay, and then if you bring your ruler all the way down, we're going to do the same on the bottom of these rectangles. So it's the same measurements again. So we've got uh, one and one eighth, two and five eighths, four and one eighth and five and five eighths. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna score from that mark to this corner here and from that mark to that corner. So you're basically scoring an upside down V within that box. And you're gonna do that on all of your top ones. And then on the bottom, it's the other way up. So it's actually a V. So you're gonna score from that mark to the top of the rectangle, from that mark to the top of that rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do those. Okay, so you should end up with that. So hopefully you can see. Now I haven't used very thick card. This card is probably about 180 GSM. Um, it's really not thick, really thick at all. And I've done that deliberately because I just didn't want to have to struggle because it's such a small, you know, little small egg um i didn't want to have to struggle with these score lines so i've gone quite yeah quite thin so now what we're going to do is we're just going to fold all of our score lines apart from the diagonal ones are going to be mountain folds so we're going to fold them all as mountain folds so not, not the diagonal but everything else is a mountain Okay, so I've gone ahead and done all the mountain folds. So now we're going to need to do all of these as valleys. Now this is this is the reason why I've chosen a very thin card because it makes these crease lines a whole lot easier to do. Um, so, so you're just going to go into each one and just crease all your diagonals and make them valleys. Okay, so you end up with that. So we're going to put some tape on here. I would use red tape. You can use a wet glue if you want. I like to use a red tape just so I know it's definitely stuck. So we're going to stick that on like that. And then I'm just going to peel that off. So we're going to turn it over first of all. Just fold that, that in. Just fold whatever side in. And then you want to fold the other side over and stick it down and it kind of makes a little, it just joins it all up. 
So now at this point, we can go ahead and put our box together or we can decorate. I'm going to decorate because I feel like it's going to be easier to decorate now rather than decorating when it's up. So I'm going to turn it round. Oh, the top, the, so the long bit, the rectangles go at the top and then the two squares go at the bottom. So to decorate, you're going to need a lot of very, very small pieces. So you need 14 squares that are half an inch by half an inch and four squares that are half inch by one and a quarter. So basically all your squares obviously go where the squares are. So all in here, you can make these a little bit bigger if you want, because that is quite a big border and your rectangles go there. So I'm going to go ahead and stick all of these down. OK, so as you can see, you can see where I've stuck them. I've got two spare because these are going to go on the top. So you're only going to put them on the two, so with it's folded flat, the two flat rectangles leave the ones that have got the score lines on, same on that side, and then you're going to do all of these four across here and the same on that side, and then here again, you're only going to do the two squares that don't have the score lines. These bottom squares and the very top squares you're going to leave for now because we're going to put it together and then we'll add our last two squares on top. So now what we want to do is get some red tape. And we're going to put a little bit of red tape just on to the top of this um, the top of this tab. Just pick a tab, any tab will do. Just pick a tab and just stick a bit of red tape onto it. And do the same at the top. If you want to hang these up, um, then you don't want to put red tape at the top. You're going to want to use uh, a bit of string through the top so you can hang it, make a little hole um, through all the tabs. But I'm actually going to just secure mine up. So with it like this, if this is the bottom. If you turn it upside down like this, what you're going to do, if you take the backing off of these tabs and then hold the whole thing up, and this is the sticky side. The sticky side is going to come in and this tab, which is opposite, is going to stick on top of that. So if you bring it in, I find if you bring it in, get this cut edge lined up with that folded bit there and then bring the whole thing over so that it literally sticks on top. And then just get your finger under and just give it a, a good stick. So you end up with that, which looks a bit weird. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some red tape on the underneath of this one. And I'm literally going to do it along the edge. And also on the underside of this one as well. So both of those two tabs that are left, we're just going to put red tape on. So you end up with that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just pop those little triangles in. And this is going to stick onto there. So if we just kind of pop it in like that, and that is going to stick onto there. Can you see how your base is starting to take shape? So I'm just going to take the backing off. Now we kind of know where we're sticking it. It is quite fiddly because this is a small egg. It gets easier the larger the egg size. So we're going to squeeze those two little triangles in, bring that in so that, that literally the edge of that lines up with the folded edge there. And this comes over the top and sticks down like that. Okay, and then we're going to do the same with this side. So that's going to bring in like that. Hopefully you can see that when you come to the camera. So you can see I'm going to crease those two in like that. And then that is going to come over the top like that. So we'll take the backing off. So taking the backing off. So there we go. Bring it over the top and stick it down. And you can actually get your hand inside and press down. Or use a, a ruler or something if you can't quite reach like that and then inside if you want to you can fit either a Cadbury cream egg or I've got this Lind Lindor one and it should fit in there and then when you close this up which I'm not gonna I'm not actually gonna close this into it but as you can see it fits perfectly within your little egg you can hear it rattling around but it's it really works really well 
So anything like a cream egg or these Lind Lindor ones, anything this kind of size works perfectly. So we're going to go ahead and do the same with this. So we're just going to take off the backing. I am actually going to put this egg in and I'm going to use it for one of my Easter gifts. So there we go. And then we're going to, so this is the sticky bit. I'm just going to bring that right over like that. Put that over the top and stick it down. You always want to get your finger in the side so you can get it stuck. And then we're going to put red tape on here and here. So then we're going to peel off the backing and do exactly the same as what we did with the bottom section. So we're going to squash those two little triangles in, and just fold that over and press down. And the same with that one. If you want to put two lines of tape on the flap, you can. I find one's enough. Um, it depends, obviously, if you've got thicker card, you might, you might need to have a second one. And then we're just going to push that in, push that in, and there you have it. So there's your little, your little egg globe. They're really cute. I think they're really nice. I think they're really nice when they're decorated up. I did do like a sample one, which is just out of plain card. It looks quite nice, but once you decorate it up, it just takes it up to another level. If you want to, you can, you know, decorate with triangles. But I think I quite like the, the change, you know, the differentiation between the, the base card and the pattern. So that's that one. So then what we need to do is we just need to add on our two little squares, one at the top and one at the bottom. So this is the rest of our pattern. As I said, if you want to hang these up, then what you want to do on the top here is you want to make sure you punch a hole through all four tabs at the top so they all line up and then thread some string or twine or whatever you're using um, and tie a knot and just kind of have it coming up like a little loop um, and that way you can hang them up. Um, I'm not going to hang this one up because I'm possibly going to put these in like a little basket or just give them as they are. Not really sure yet, but and also because I think that with the once you've put a Cadbury cream egg or a Lind Lindor egg or whatever, they're quite heavy. So I think like if you've tried to put them on a twig tree with one of those eggs in it, it would be quite heavy. OK, so there we go. So there's the finished, the finished egg. So that's quite cool. So let's get into the second size. OK, so this is for the next size up. So this makes a an egg box, which is this size. OK, so it's a bit, a bit bigger. Uh, it doesn't really fit any kind of supermarket egg. I mean, there might be some out there that fits, but it'd be great for filling with mini eggs or filling with the little mini, you know, dime bar or Cadbury eggs or whatever, or the little, you know, lint ones. Or you could even fill it with lint Lindor balls. Um, so to make this, you need a piece of card that is six inches by eight and a quarter. And this time you're going to score at one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches, five inches, six inches, seven inches, eight inches. Nice and easy. OK, so all the measurements will be up on the screens. It's basically every inch. OK, uh, and it leaves you with a quarter inch um, tab. And then down the side, so if you turn it round, obviously scoring down the um, short edge, you're scoring at one inches, two inches, three inches and five inches. So again, this rectangle is just twice the width of your normal square. So really nice and easy. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. So where the tab is, the square next to the tab is going to go, miss one, then that's going to go, miss one, that's going to go, miss one. That's going to go. And at the bottom, the same again. So this one and the tab, miss one. That one's going to go, miss one. That one's going to go, miss one. That one's going to go. OK, so we're going to go ahead now and cut these out. So that's what you end up with. So now we're going to do our diagonal score lines which actually are really easy on this particular um egg so you're just going to score so if you get your ruler your little tabs on the right get your ruler and you are going to score halfway so because it's an inch it's really easy so you're going to make a little mark at one and a half at three and a half five and a half and seven and a half and then we're going to go down to the bo bottom and do the same again i've gone a bit wonky there with my lines but it won't matter once it's all together so one and a half three and a half five and a half and seven and a half 
and then we're going to get our ruler and do exactly what we did before so on the top I've, I've, i mean this is the the um the rectangles are actually at the top but for now i'll put them at the bottom it's just easier for my brain to figure out so we're just going to go ahead and do that the same so anything on the top is going to be a upside down like a mountain an upside down v and anything on the bottom is going to be a v so mountain at the top and valley at the bottom good way of remembering it okay so we end up with that and so then we need to go and fold all of our lines so again everything that's horizontal or vertical is a mountain and all of your diagonal are valley okay so that's what you end up with so again we're going to put tape along this section here And then we're going to turn it over, fold it over, and just stick these two sides together. Okay. And so you end up with that. So now we need to decorate. So again, you're only going to stick them in the full squares. So these rectangles here, these two here, and the two on the other side all these four squares and then just these two squares so for this you need 14 squares that are three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch and then four rectangles that are three quarters of an inch by one and three quarters so i'm going to go ahead and stick all of these on Okay, so we're back at this bit here where we've decorated all of that. So now what we need to do is go ahead and add our red tape on the bottom. And actually what you can do is you can go ahead if you want to and just put it on three tabs. So on the inside edge of three tabs. One of them I've done two lines, the others I'm just going to do one line. But if you just do the inside of three tabs and then... It's because it's easier to do it when it's flat, that's all. So I'm just going to do that now. So these bottom ones. And I'm also going to do it on the inside of the top three as well. Just make sure whatever tabs you're putting on, whichever you do um, the two tabs, the two lines of tape, the one opposite it needs to not have any tape on it. So on here, for example, this one needs to not have tape so these two can have tape on them but not the one that's opposite so just bear that in mind if you're going to do it this way around just keep that in mind when you're adding tape otherwise you're going to end up with too much too much tape going on okay so once again i'm just going to take off the two lots of backing And then we're going to pop this up and find the opposite one, which is this one. Bring the two together like that. And then just fold it over and stick it on top. Like that. And then we're going to do the same with this one. So bring, take the, tap, the backing off. And then fold your little triangles in, bring that crease line to the edge of the square that you've got at the bottom there, fold it over and stick it down like that. And then last but not least, we're going to do the last one. So that's what you end up at the bottom. If you want to get your hand in, just give it a bit of a press down or put a ruler in or something in. Just give it a bit of a press down, you can. Like that. And then we're going to do the same at the top. Now, obviously, if you're going to fill it, fill it first. Um, I'm going to quickly show you how to do, do it so that you can um, hang it up. 
Okay, so I've got myself some thin ribbon. This is like really thin stuff. Um, and I've got eight inches in length. Uh, and I've just got one of these like belt punch things. And I'm just going to punch quite a thin hole like that, that I would say. So not the thinnest one, but the one next to it. I want it to be just slightly thinner than my, um, than my ribbon. So then I'm going to take a, I'm going to take the one that's got the two uh, things on it, the two bits of tape. And I'm just going to draw a line, dark corner to corner, just in the middle there, and the other way. I'm not be able to hold on to things at the moment. I'm afraid I keep dropping everything. I don't know why. What's going on there? Okay, so about like there. So that tells me there where my center is. So I'm going to come in with my belt thing, and I'm going to my punch, and I'm going to punch a hole in the middle of that, like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the opposite one over like that i'm not taking the tape off just yet and then just on the top there where you can see it lines up i'm just going to draw a little line little mark with my pencil and then i'm going to come in and punch a hole so i know that those two should line up then i'm going to bring another one over so if this is like this like that bring this over like that oh that way around sorry it's quite fiddly i'm having a bit of a fiddle here like that to get my pencil and draw through that little hole on the top so just make sure that this is obviously lined up as it would be if it was stuck so make a little hole on there so that should line up with the others and then you just then want to bring if you bring this one over here like that there we go oh they want to oh, they want to pull apart because they're not stuck together so you just have to be quite firm with them draw a little pencil thing through the hole and then punch another hole there like that okay so now what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and stick these two how we did it before so we're just going to go ahead and you know carry on as normal so we're going to take the backing off this bit here And then bring that one over to this one and stick them down. Now your holes should meet up, hopefully. Yep, ours do, so that's good. So you can see my holes meet up. I'm hoping it's going to be big enough for my ribbon to go through. It should be. Right, so then you want to get your ribbon, fold it in half. Oh gosh, my fingers are not working today. Fold it in half tie a knot on the bottom as best you can right at the bottom of your ribbon like that and then thread the top of this loop underneath here and up and inside if you want to do each flap as you go you can but um it's going to be tricky whatever way you do it So there's your loop. So now what you want to do is feed that loop through the flap you're about to stick down. Take off your backing. And then stick it down. And actually the ribbon will kind of help you to get it in the right place, hopefully. Just make sure you don't end up sticking the ribbon in where the tape is. So just keep pulling it as you're sticking it down so like that and i've forgotten to fill mine so i'm not actually going to stick this down for now but anyway what you would do when you're finished is you're going to take that tape off and then poke this through here like this and stick your last one down as i'm not going to stick mine down just yet because i haven't filled it but that then gives you your middle size so they're quite cute so there's your two different sizes okay for my last but not least oh the other thing i meant to do as well was obviously add your um add your pattern paper so again what you can do 
get your pattern paper, punch a hole in the top, just find out where the centre is, punch a hole in the top, stick that on and obviously stick the one on the bottom. Okay, so for the last one, you're going to need quite a big piece of card. So this one is seven and a half by ten and a half inches. So on this, you're going to score at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five inches, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, and ten. Okay, so again, all those measurements will be up on the screen. So if you need to pause the video and just, you know, look at them, you can. And then if we turn it round, you're going to score at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and six and a quarter. Okay, and so again, with the tab on the right, Exactly the same as what we've done for the other two sizes. That's where the tab is. So the square next to it is going to go. We're going to miss one. That's going to go. Miss one. That's going to go. Miss one. That's going to go. Let's go down to the bottom. Wherever the one at the top is, that's where the bottom one is going to go. Okay. So we're going to go ahead now and cut all of those out. Okay, so you should end up with that, with that like we did before. So now we're going to go ahead and score all of our, not score, we're going to put in our diagonal lines. So for this one, you're going to put your um, ruler down and you are going to mark halfway. Now I'm actually going to do it, let me have a look. So you're going to mark along this top section here. So you're going to mark at one and seven eighths four and three eighths, six and seven eighths, nine and three eighths. And then you're going to do the same again at the bottom. So again, one and seven eighths, four and three eighths, six and seven eighths, and nine and three eighths. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and we're going to score, like we did before, with the diagonal lines. So now we're going to go ahead and do what we did before. So all your horizontal and your vertical lines are mountain and all of your diagonal are valley. So again, for this one, you want to put um, some red tape along this tab. I'm going to turn it round, fold some of it in, and then take the backing off and stick that down. Then we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to add my tape onto three tabs, making sure that whichever one has the two pieces on it is not the one you know it's, it's the one opposite it doesn't have any on it i'm not going to make this a hanging this is just going to be a stuck stuck together um because i think that it doesn't need i think this is going to be too heavy to hang obviously it depends what you put in it but i'm i'm planning to put i'm hoping to fit that mini egg one in it i don't know if that's going to work we'll see And then we need to go ahead and decorate. So for this, you need 14 squares that are one inch by one inch and four rectangles that are one inch by two and a quarter. So you decorate in exactly the same as you did before. You'd have two left over for the top and bottom and then you literally decorate them the same as we did with the others. So I'm going to go ahead now and decorate these. Okay, so that's us decorated as far as we can go. So let's start with the bottom. There's my 
flap with two pieces of tape on it so let's take that one off first and then we're going to bring it in and do exactly what we did before so bring them over like that and stick it down and then we're going to just coax those two little triangles in fold that in and stick that down And then we're going to do the same on this one here, fold that down, stick that down, so there's your base. Now I'm going to attempt to get this mini egg egg in here. I don't know if it's going to fit, but we're going to try it and see. Let's see if it will work. I think it's going to be too big. Oh, oh yeah, the top's too big, that's a shame. Okay, so it doesn't quite fit a mini egg egg. Okay, so what I'll probably have to do then is I'll probably have to fill this with something else like, um, so I've got those marzipan ones, these little marzipan ones I got from Aldi, so they would fit, um, or anything similar to that. So I'm going to, I'm not going to, am I going to do it? No, I'm not going to fill it up all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that across like that, but you can see what you do. So you just fold them up like that, fold them up like that, and that gives you your, your egg. So there you have your, um, and obviously then you need to just put your two little squares on the bottom and the top. So there you have your three different sizes. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed, hope you enjoyed today's video. It's a bit longer than normal, but I just wanted to show you the three sizes so that then, you know, you can have a go if you want to. You can pick a size that suits you best, depending on what product you've got. You can even experiment and go larger if you want to. I am going to try and do one that's a bit bigger. Um at some point i'm not sure yeah if i'm gonna get time but if i will if i can i will i will try and do one that's a bit bigger but yeah so that's the video for today i hope you liked it please like and subscribe hit the notification bell so you never miss a, miss a video leave a comment down below if you want to become a member and support the channel please do just click on the join button below this video if you're signed in um or you can click on the link in the description um but yeah i'll see you again next time bye